acabar de grabar. Vale. Escena 2, plano 18B, de nuevo. Toma uno. Sí. Vale, diré acción y después señal, ¿eh, Richard? Por aquí. Vale, acción. Callem. It's uh, about a pirate. It's our main character, a man that is uh, really savage uh, and hard life uh, he was fighting. And suddenly he is alone in an island, but maybe it's going to happen something that it will be not so easy to leave that island. The idea is from Edin Donovan. She wrote me uh, to say I would like to direct it. And of course, <laughs> I would because uh, I thought it was fantastic. At the beginning, uh, it's supposed to be young characters. And then I talked to Erin to say, I think it will be great if they are not young people. And we have someone that is an age. It's not old, it's mature, it's live enough to think about a lot of things. So at that moment it was like Marcel. Mi personaje es el de acompañante. Es de carne y hueso, que es algo que está dentro de nuestra imaginación, forma parte de nuestras creencias y para mí el reto del personaje estaba precisamente en eso, en acompañar, en no juzgar. It's not easy to find someone that it's uh, not a young one and it's a good actor and the more important for us is someone that the, the first moment you see it in the, in the camera, you feel the presence uh, completely. And that was Richard and it was perfect. So this idea of making a movie where there was almost no text was very interesting to me because I would be working alone in nature and I'm very interested in being in nature. I'm very interested in um, the sort of explorer's mentality of, on the one hand, being at one with nature, but on the other hand, having to battle with nature. It was also interesting to me, I think, not the youngest people and not the perfect island Hawaii. It's uh, this uh, green that it's close to brown and this uh, color of the sea that it's not the perfect blue. It's a Mediterranean thing. As we shoot in so different places, in different coasts, we need ships, everything to go to one place to another. So all the logistical about the location, it was really, really difficult. At the end, the location was hard, really hard. It was very hard, very hard. And uh, half the shooting was all the time handheld, okay, on also Steadicam. We shoot very close to cliffs. We shoot uh, in a non very steady boat, for example. I also shoot uh, inside the water also to follow the main, uh, the main actor. Sometimes I have to follow him in a very unsafe place and sometimes with a lot of rocks in the ground, so uh, I need a lot of assistance. Uh, sometimes only to not fall to the, to the ground. Nadie. Plano, 27-48, toma dos. Silenci, acción.
Vale, tallem. Molt bé, Richard, gràcies. Ho és like a... Like a boy scout shooting. Like when I was a child and and I was playing in the with my friends and doing crazy things. This time with a camera, but were was more or less the same. The images underwater, everything changes. It's impossible to plan something. But the thing is, in in this everything changes. The images are also beautiful. At that moment, the actors were great because it was the first day they just arrived to the set and it was welcome to the water both of you and it was frozen it was really cold i was in the ship just looking at them and at the first moment richard came to the water i thought like he is going to go out now from the shooting that's the end of the short film because it was really cold. I arrived at the hotel. I dropped my stuff into the room, and they said, "Right, your first scene is the underwater scene." So you know, it was the first time I even put the costume on: the big boots, the big heavy belt with the big buckles, and the, and the, and the, the metal, um, and jump in the water. Their idea was they wanted to give me a, an oxygen tank. Well, to give me the oxygen feed, so that I could swim underwater with a diver without a mask. Uh, it's quite strange going underwater breathing with just the mouthpiece, and I didn't feel comfortable with that. Um, but I'm a very comfortable swimmer and snorkeler, so I said, "Well, look, um, let me dive with the help of the divers down without any oxygen, without anything, and and then uh, just let me go." Because it was basically, you know, just to show me drifting up towards the surface, but the camera was below. El agua no sabía, no sabría decirte a cuántos grados estaba, pero yo diría que a menos 20 por lo menos. Son aguas muy profundas, son aguas que te alejas de la costa y ya tiene un color azul marino, con lo cual impresiona. Y luego también la responsabilidad, porque no solo eres tú que estás metido en el agua, sino de ti depende también en tu efectividad que ese plano sea bueno si no a la primera por favor a la segunda porque tienes todo un equipo y unos compañeros que se están congelando bajo el agua I was astonished when I saw what Javi Reda did was amazing. He was not only resolutive, making solutions in every problem he had, he was creative. The main the, uh, difficulty of the editing was the fact that the short film was almost 90% uh, silent. So you had to uh, express all the inside world of the, of the main character uh, with the images you had. So it was my concern, trying to uh, create the better editing I could with the things I had. When you had to to put or or not uh, take, it's a strong decision because you are cutting the art of someone. Someone uh, worked a lot for that specific image. At the same time, I worked in the special effects. Well, my my principal work was to um, erase things. Okay, for example, we have some takes of the ship in the sea, and we I had to erase other ships that were uh, sailing there in the in the. See, for example, I made a special effect where you have full moon, and then the camera goes down and then uh, creates a close-up of the pirate. And uh, it's made in real, but I had to make the composition of the two because uh, we shoot the moon and then we shoot the face. And we had this movement of the camera, but you had to mix them in some point to, to, to merge the, the two images. And, uh, and other effects, but more or less was all the time the same. To erase things and to put things uh, in a good looking way. The music is really important because this is no dialogue or few dialogue short film. So we need the ambience and uh, the music being together. And also that this being together, it's really important because the island is talking through the ambience and the music. The music and the sound has a proper space or I think the image and the history and everything is like very equal and it's very interesting because it's a fiction and then it's an, an history that gives you the chance to 
do things that are not normal. When the siren comes in, uh, the nature turns crazy. But to be honest, the, the, the main thing is recording on location. It has been incredible. We've, we've recorded with a surround system and then we achieved something like close to 5.1. So we have the a stereo pair that is looking to the actor and then another stereo pair that is on the back and then one focusing the action and then gives you a color. There is one, one shooting of the pirate that goes running into the water and, and shouts. And I think that sound, it it's deserves a live. We are lucky we are going to do the post-production in a new system that it's uh, Dolby Atmos, that it's like uh, 30 audio points. We have the chance to remix it again and then that be, that could be awesome, no? So you can have the 5.1, the 7.1, but if you have Dolby Atmos, then you can be in there.